Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's time to declare your morning. It's a beautiful day, so put a smile on your face. Yes, the day is going away, and new days a new day for you to smile. I'm going to give me a cup of coffee. Tell everybody good morning. You feel so much better in the morning. Everybody. It's time to declare your morning. It's a beautiful day, so put a smile on your face. Yes, the day is going away, and new day is a new day for you to smile. I'm going to give me a cup of coffee. Tell everybody good morning. you feel so much better in the morning for the So, get up out of that bed. Come on and hold your head up high. Get up out of that bed. And get that sleep out of your eye. Get up out of that bed. It's time to declare. It's time morning. to declare your morning. Good morning. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. It's time to declare your morning. This is the Declare Your Morning Show, the Good Morning Show, and I'm your host, Biddy Duncan. Thank you all so much for being with me once again for another episode of the Declare Your Morning Show. It's a beautiful day to be alive and well, and I'm super excited about what God has in store for us. Somebody say today. That's right. The heavens are open. Opportunities are knocking. Dreams are being realized, and God is still in control. So do me a favor. Get up out of that bed. Hold your head up high and get that sleep out of your eye. It's time to declare your morning. Good morning, everybody. Please like and share. Please like, share, and follow this page so you can get all the notifications and know that we are here live to declare our morning. Good morning to one, of, one and all. Get your peoples in the room. If you are here, I want you to come on into the room and say good morning. Also, do me a favor, hit that share button, pick your option, come back into the room and type in the number one, hit share, hit that share button and then type the number one. Get your peoples up in the room, up in the room. Good morning, everybody. We're so super excited to be with you once again to declare our morning. Now, I want, to want you to decree and declare that something good is going to happen for me today. That's right. Make it personal. Something good is going to happen for you today. That's right. Speak to yourself and say something good is going to happen for me on today. That's right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for coming into the room. Those of you who are watching from the outside looking in, I want to say good morning to you as well. Make sure you get yourself some coffee, some cappuccino, some hot cocoa, whatever it is you need to get yourself together so you can go up in that job with some act right. Is that all right? All right, all right, all right. Good morning, everybody. It's time for the roll call, so let's see who's here. Good morning, everybody. Vanita Towns is here. Good morning. Cheryl Duran is here. Good morning. Thank you, Vanita, for sharing. Netta Duvall is here. Good morning. Carolyn Taylor is here. Good morning. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing, Netta. Let's see who else is in the room. Well, that's what we have so far. But good morning to everybody. I need to see the hearts and the likes going crazy on the screen. Real quickly, I need to see the hearts and the likes going crazy on the screen. Everybody, if you could just start the hearts and the likes going on the screen, uh, people will start getting those notifications right away. 
people will start getting those notifications right away. We want everybody to get an opportunity to be encouraged this morning. So just take a few moments and start sharing those hearts and those likes and get your peoples up in the room. Real quickly, get your peoples up in the room. See if we can run the numbers up on the hearts and the likes. Get your peoples up in the room. All right, all right. Everybody, make your fingers do the walking and the talking. We can get those hearts and likes up to par. Amen. Make sure you pray for the bereaved families, those who are sick and shut in, those who are homeless, those who are hungry. While you are praying, ask God, what can I do to be a blessing uh, to someone in their time of need on today. Amen. God has blessed us to be a blessing. Pray for those who are in authority so that we might live a quiet and peaceful life. We have been commissioned by the word of the Lord to do so. So make sure that you are spending your time in prayer for our leaders today. Not in complaining, but in prayer so that we can see God do what he does and that's be God amen amen want to say happy birthday to all the birthday babies throughout the month of November also happy anniversary to all of you who are celebrating your anniversaries in this month if it's your birthday if it's your anniversary go ahead and post it up in the chat so we can love on you you're so super uh, excited that you are part of the declare your morning show Thank you all so much. Good morning, Miss Annette Wright is here, my good friend from Delaware. Good to see you here. Hope all is well with you and the family. Want to shout out all the teachers, the students, the parents, grandparents who help our children receive their education. Thank you so much. You are greatly appreciated. We want you to know that your labor of love has not gone unnoticed. We are praying for you continually that God will continue to keep you strong so that you can do what you do best. Amen. And that's the love on our children. Thank you so much. For those of you who would like to give, we have two platforms for giving, and that's Cash App and PayPal. You can do so with the information that's right here on the screen. We also thank God for all of our partners. Thank God for you who give on a regular basis. You have already committed yourself to giving. And so we thank God for you on a regular basis. And we pray that God will bless you continually more and more. Amen. Amen. Well, this is the Declare Your Morning Show. Get your peoples in the room. And continue to put those hearts and likes. You all know that our number is 1,000. Our number is 1,000. People start getting those notices right away as we continue to share the hearts and the likes. So come on in the room, everybody. Come on up in the room. Be thankful to God that you are here. Each one of you is important to us as we share the good news, the good message of Jesus Christ on a regular basis. We try to come and give you something uh, that's going to encourage your heart. By the way, this Declare Your Morning show is being brought to you by Credit Restoration Resource Center. You can go to www. T H E C R R C dot com. That's www dot T 
T-H-E-C-R-R-C.com for your credit restoration. God bless you all. This week, we're talking about Kingdom Focus, and we want to pick up where we left off on yesterday. <clears throat> Such a powerful thought to uh, kind of provoke us in the way that we should go. Uh, we all look at uh, things that we have been doing in the past, and you know, everyone can use uh, some motivation to be corrected, uh, some things that we can look at from a critical standpoint. Good morning, Summer Payne is here. Uh, there's some things that we can look at. All of us could use some changes in our lives. All of us could use some correction. And, and some in some cases, we need some rebuke. Uh, there's some things that we continue to do um, that are not kingdom. And so uh, we have to be, sometimes we have to be offended. Let me just say it like that. Sometimes we have to be offended to help snap us out of uh, this mindset of wrongdoing, wrong patterns, wrong mindsets. Uh, help us to get out of that mode and in the way that leadeth to glory. Amen. That leadeth to glory. And so we're super excited about that. This week we're talking about kingdom focus. And uh, today I want to speak to you about the matters of the heart. Matters of the heart. Matters of the heart. Matters of the heart. This is Kingdom Focus Day 2, and I want to focus on matters of the heart. Matters of the heart. And I want to begin by asking you, where is your heart? What is your heart condition? What is your heart's condition? Because... Um, your heart is responsible for the life's blood of your entire situation. How you live your life and the productivity of your life deals with the matters of your heart. How your, your characteristics and how you behave all deal with the matters of your heart. What do you focus on the most? Do you focus on kingdom? Do you focus on carnality? All has to deal with the matters of your heart. Jesus said it this way, where your treasure is, is where your heart is going to be. Or where your heart is, that's where your treasure is going to be. In other words, where your heart is, Whatever your passion is, is where you're going to spend most of your time, most of your money, and most of your effort. Most of your time, most of your money, most of your effort is going to be spent in the things where your heart really is. All right? I've said it often. It's easy to find out where a person's heart is because all you have to look is their treasury. <laughs> look at their treasury. Let me take a look at your checkbook for those of you who are old school. Let me look at, <laughs> Let me look at your checkbook. Let me look at your bank account. And I can tell you exactly where your heart is. All right? And so this is something we don't even have to be fictitious about. We can literally measure the values of your heart. It's real easy. We have a blueprint. Now, what we need to understand is when it comes to the matters of the heart, there needs to be some balance. There, be, there needs to be some balance. And you cannot have balance when we're talking about kingdom focus and the matters of the heart the balance comes when we make sure that God is priority in our lives, that our hearts are fixed towards him. Ask your virtual neighbor, say, 
Or is your heart fixed toward God? Is your heart fixed towards the kingdom of God? Is it fixed? I'm talking about fixed. I'm not talking about a visit. I'm talking about is it fixed? When something has been fixed, it's, uh, let, me give you the, let me give you an example. You have a piece of real estate. And in real estate, there's something called fixtures. All right? Something called real property. When you have real property, it's everything that is fixed to the property. So you can have a pool in the backyard, but it could be one of them blow-up pools. But then you can have a pool that is fixed to the property. That's called real property. Now, the pool that was a blow-up pool, you can take that to your next spot. When you move out of that house, you can you can take the air out of it and, and, and go on to the next spot. But the one that is fixed to the property is committed to the property. So the question is here, is your heart fixed to the property? Because God is looking to see what's real property and what's personal property. Ooh, I just gave you a real estate lesson and you ain't even know it. In other words, God wants to know what individualities you have. Are you independent or are you dependent on him? Are you connected to him in such a way that you say, God, I want you to have complete and total control over my life. I'm just talking about matters of the heart this morning. As we focus on kingdom focus, matters of the heart is is your heart fixed on the kingdom to bring about a balance in your life? Because this is what many of us do. We use God, can I say this? We use God long enough to get what we want. Ooh, I messed somebody up right there. If you can't say amen, just say ouch. We use God long enough to get what we want. As long as God, you know, we'll pray to God and ask God as long as we're in a, in a pinch of a situation. We'll use God for what we need, like God is some kind of Santa Claus or something. We'll use him and then once God delivers on to us what it is we've been praying for, we act like God doesn't exist. Some of us even pretend as if we did it ourselves. Isn't that interesting? And then all of a sudden, the, the, the boat starts to shake, the rock. The storms come. The winds blow. You know, life happens. And then all of a sudden, we remember God. So there's an imbalance there. Because you're seeking after the stuff was really what you wanted. You didn't want God, you wanted stuff. You wanted materials. You wanted a relationship. God, give me a boo. I need a new boo. God, give me a boo-boo. You wanted the stuff, you wanted the person. You didn't want God. And so what happens is you begin to worship the person. Y'all not talking to me today. I'm just talking about matters of your heart. So you spend more time with the person than you spend with God. But the truth of the matter is we need to spend time with God so we know how to handle the person. Y'all not talking to me here. You ask God for the job. He gave you the job with the six figures. That's right. He gave you the job with the six figures, and you forgot that God was the one that did it for you. You thought it was your skill set. You thought it was your intellect. You thought it was your know-how. You thought it was your connections. You thought it was your degree. You thought it was the letters behind your name. And God said, no, I was the one who provided for you. 
And so you got the job and you forgot about God. And you so so you spend more time on the job than you spend with God. You spend more time talking about the job than you spend talking about God. Is there anybody here that knows what I'm talking about? You don't have to be ashamed this morning. It's all covered under the blood. <laughs> Woo. And so when we lose the job, then we run back to God. When at the whole time we should be consulting God about why we have the job in the first place. What God, why did you give me this job? Have you ever asked yourself, have you ever gone on a job and and ask yourself, God, why am I here? We're talking about kingdom focus and we're talking about the matters of the heart, right? If we're going to bring things into perspective and kingdom perspective, then when you got the job, you should ask God, why am I here? If somebody said, well, Pastor Benny, it's obvious why I'm here. I'm here to make money. Wrong. That's not why you're there. I need my needs met. Wrong. The job provides for, for me. Wrong. That's not why you have the job. Well, Pastor Benny, some of you will be, try to be smart and say, well, Pastor Benny, I got the job so I can pay tithes. Wrong. <laughs> Because God, the Bible says, he gives seed to sowers. All right? So you got the job, watch this, so that you can be an ambassador for the kingdom of God. That's why you have the job. You have the job because many of us don't know how to evangelize on our own. So God uses the job as a training opportunity to show you that at least if I have an, a daily acquaintance of people that I see every day, the very least I should be telling them about the God that I serve. At the very least, I feel the anointing creeping up on me here now. I said, at the very least, you should be telling the folks that you're acquainted with every single day about the God that you serve. But if you're ashamed to tell the people on the job that, that you serve a God that gave you the job in the first place, that he is the God that provides for me. This job doesn't provide for me, but he provides all my needs according to his riches that are in glory. It's a different perspective, isn't it? And the perspective is, deal is dealing with the matters of my heart. And the truth of the matter is we cannot have, we cannot have a pure heart towards God as a result, as it regards the kingdom of God until God begins to deal with us. We can't have a pure heart towards God and his kingdom until he begins to deal with us. Somebody just type in, deal with me, Lord. Deal with me, Lord. I don't see the hearts or the lights going crazy on the screen. So maybe I need to turn give you a different example. Maybe y'all don't get it. Somebody said, deal with me, Lord. Deal with me, Lord. So I can change my perspective. Deal with me, Lord. So I don't think the job provides for me. Deal with me, Lord. So I don't think that the doctor is the healer. Deal with me, Lord. Because you are the God that healeth all my diseases. You are the God that provides everything that I need. And so my focus should be on you. Not on the relationship. Because I don't, I, it, listen, if I go in with my own ideas, I'm going to spoil the relationship. I don't know how to love my wife unless God tells me what to do. Do you hear what I'm trying to tell you? I don't know what to say to her 
in, in, in broken times and broken places and broken spaces unless God gives me the answers. So my focus needs to be on God. My focus needs to be on his kingdom. So I know how to treat my wife. So I know how to treat my children. So I know how to treat my fellow man. How to treat my neighbors. How to treat my co-workers. How to speak to folks. How to look folks in the eyes and smile. How to speak first and last. How to show God's love. I can't do any of that having my own independent way. So what does David say? David says in Psalm 51, David says, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. Some of us need a heart check. You need spiritual cardiology. Say, Lord, check me. Cre create in me a clean heart. Renew within me the right spirit. I need, I need a heart check. One of my favorite songs is called Surgery. I need you to perform surgery on me. Lord, I, I need you to check my heart. Check the valves of my heart to make sure that the blood of Jesus is pumping through my veins. Somebody say, Lord, check me. Hallelujah. You need a spiritual cardiology check. Matter of fact, Lord, check me through and through. <laughs> check me, check me through and through. Because I don't know how to be, I don't know how to do right. I've tried my own thing. Every time, every time I tried my way, Shanoa, every time I tried my way, I get it wrong. Every time I tried my way, somebody get cussed out. Every time I tried my way, somebody might have, mm, get a ball for me. <laughs> somebody said, Lord, check me. Because my heart, my heart, because if your heart isn't right, remember the heart pumps the blood throughout the rest of the body. The brain can't even function without the heart and vice versa. But the, 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 the blood that is being pumped through the body creates the oxygen that the brain and the rest of the body needs. Bishop Fritz, God bless you. Check your heart. See if your aspirations and your inspirations are grounded within the kingdom of God. Kingdom focus. Really, if you want to know your, the condition of your heart towards God, see what you focus on the most. And it's a challenge for all of us. What are you focusing on the most? I dare you to go and do, listen, you ain't got to put it out here on Facebook. You ain't got to put it out on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, whatever. You don't have to put it out there like that. Do your own. Check yourself. The Bible says examine your own self. Examine yourselves. Do, do the challenge. That's my challenge to you today. Summer pain, I want you to challenge yourself and write down, where do I spend most of my time? What do I spend most of my money on? What do I put most of my effort in? And you'll find where your heart is. Trust me on this. You will find where your heart is. I spend most of my time thinking about this no good Negro. <laughs> good God Almighty. I listen, I spend most of my time thinking about Roxanne. 
Roxanne, Roxanne. I want to be your man. <laughs> That's where we spend our time. I spend most of my time looking at the material things. And those acquiring of material things has nothing to do with what you're going to do to please God. That's a problem. We don't think it's a problem. We, we say God wants us to have nice things. God wants us to have the kingdom. Yes, he wants us to have the kingdom. He wants you to have nice things, but for the kingdom. When you get the nice car that you want, how many people are you going to go and pick up, take to the grocery store? What, what single mother are you going to look at and say, she needs some help? When you get to the place you want to be financially, what are you going to do with that money? You get the big house and you only need two rooms. How many folks are you going to let live in your big house? <laughs> when you get the Bentley, can pass the Bentley come drive it? <laughs> oh, boy. I told you, checking your heart. <laughs> Trust me, I'm going to check you. Because the Bible tells us to charge the pastors. We are to charge those who are rich among us to, so that they don't be heady and high-minded. Soon as I see you with the nice car, I'm going to show sure call you. And I'm going to say, listen, I got a situation real quick. I got to get to such and such. Can I come by and borrow the bins? I'm going to check you. I'm going to see where your heart is. Glory to God. I said, I'm going to check you. I do it all the time. I, I see where people's pride is. I do it all the time. And the ones who say, and I just look at myself and say, sorry for you, because it won't be long. You won't have this vehicle. It won't be long because your heart is not in the right place. Check yourself. And when you know you're jacked up, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to Psalm 51 verse 10 where the scripture says, Create in me, Lord, a clean heart. My heart is jacked up. You see, you got to be honest with yourself. You got to say, Lord, my heart is jacked up. Pastor Benny asked me for the bins. And I ain't feeling that at all. <laughs> you got to just say it. You got to be real and say, God, listen, I ain't there yet. But I want you to create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. Now, Jesus said it this way, and this is one of the Beatitudes. He says, he says, blessed are those with a pure heart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Those who have a pure heart, because they're going to be the ones who see God. I believe that's Matthew chapter 5. He says, blessed are they that are pure in heart, for they shall see God. They're going to understand the mind of God. They're going to see what God sees. They're going to see life the way God sees life. They're going to see how to be a blessing to people the way God sees that we are to be connected to one another for the purpose of blessing. Somebody said, give me a clean heart, a pure heart, so I can be a blessing to others. And that's your kingdom focus moment for the day. Father, I thank you that you're cleaning us up. You're fixing our heart towards you. 
create in us a clean heart, renew the right spirit within us so that we can serve you with our whole heart. We can serve you with everything and that we will not be selfish toward one another. For you said in your word, by this shall all men know that we are your disciples when we have love one for another. Lord, when we know how to treat each other, it's easy to treat others, neighbors, strangers, because we have the practice. We have the proper practice because we have the pure hearts. So give us the hearts that we need toward you so that kingdom will go forth, that there be expansion in your kingdom. Give us a heart to speak to everybody that comes into, we come into contact with. Give us a heart, Lord, to tell everybody the good news. Everybody needs to know who you are. Let us be kingdom-focused people so that you can have your way. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Well, I got to go. But I want to let you know that you are victorious. God is on your side. Make sure you look everybody in the eyes and smile. Speak first and last. Show the love of Jesus Christ because he's been so good to you. Ain't no need to walk around with no frown. Turn that frown upside down. It's time to declare your morning. And I got to go. Until next time, I want you to experience what's new, what's now, and what's next. I love you. Good morning. Peace. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's time to declare your morning. It's a beautiful day, so put a smile on your face. Yes, the day is going away, and the day is a new day for you to smile. I'm going to give me a cup of coffee. Tell everybody good morning. You feel so much better in the morning for the So get up out of that bed. Come on and hold your head up high. Get up out of that bed. And get that sleep out of your eye. Get up out of that bed. It's time to declare. It's time to declare your morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's time to declare your morning. It's a beautiful day, so put a smile on your face. Yes, the day is going away, and the day is a new day for you to smile. I'm going to give me a cup of coffee. Tell everybody good morning. You feel so much better in the morning for the day. Get up out of that bed And get that sleep out of your eye Get up out of that bed It's time to declare It's time to declare your morning